Hello everybody, it's Dr. Stuart A. Swerdlow. And Janet Diane Moya Swerdlow. And this is, and also the Jade and Jasmine, <laughs> that they want they want to be reporters. Yeah. And they want to they want to look, read news, right. doggy news. Right. They got yeah. lots of important things to mm -hmm. say. Anyway, this is the Expansions News Podcast for the second week of August 2019. And there's quite a bit of exciting and shocking news. Uh, that I will just get into right away because just this morning uh, it was announced that Jeffrey Epstein has committed suicide inside his New York jail cell and according to the report he is found dead early Saturday morning at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, it's, it's known as MCC, mm -hmm. uh, in downtown Manhattan. Uh, Epstein uh, had boasted about his high-profile friends including Prince Andrew it's all over the news. The Queen is not amused. I don't think so. President Clinton, Hillary is not amused. And he was arrested, Epstein, on July 6th, accused of arranging to have sex with dozens of underage girls at his residences in New York City and Florida between 2002 and 2005. Of course, it was a much more extensive time period than that. Of course, he also pled not guilty to the charges. And it's just been a few weeks uh, since he was hospitalized for a suicide it's been two attempt. Two weeks, actually, two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Um, he and according to this report, that's then there's no real details. It said that he hung himself um, and was transported in cardiac arrest at 6:39 a.m. on Saturday morning, the 10th of August, from uh, the MCC. Uh, to New York Downtown Hospital. Now, that's all the news so far, as far as this recording is concerned, that's out there. Now, let me explain to the audience what suicide watch means, because he was placed on suicide watch since his last so-called attempt. Well, no, they actually had they taken him off. No, it said that he was on no, suicide watch. No, I just read watch. it just... Five minutes before right. we started, no, they said they took him off. Well, that's interesting that yes. they just took him off. And people are upset about that. Yeah, because a suicide watch means his body and cell are stripped of anything that could be used for suicide, including belts, sheets, utensils, metal objects, etc. Plus, he's under 24-7 physical watch. So, again, it said he was on suicide watch in this report, so how could he have killed himself? He was obviously murdered. Uh, his info, his documents were all downloaded, all his uh, documents had been unsealed the day before, uh, and he became a, a liability to the cabal. And just before we started filming, Attorney General Barr said that the death was suspicious and ordered an investigation, because I'm sure he was murdered. Yeah. Well, anyway, they, so as I said, just about five minutes before we went on, um, they, that's all over the news right now. AOC, all these people, they're, they're saying that he was not on suicide watch, and they're saying, why was he not on suicide so, watch? Excuse me. AOC said that anything she said is wrong. No. She didn't. She said, why was he not on suicide watch? Mm -hmm. that's, well, I'm just telling you, there's a, a very suspicious circumstances, yes. a lot of people, and let me explain why. First of all, just yesterday in the news... A woman who has long claimed that Jeffrey Epstein forced her to have sex with powerful men named two prominent Democratic politicians, former Senator George Mitchell and ex-New Mexico governor and Clinton cabinet official Bill Richardson. The revelations come from 2,000 documents that were unsealed by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. The 33-year-old woman... Uh, Virginia Roberts Jeffrey, I guess is how you say her name, filed against Epstein and his associate, Ghislaine Maxwell, in 2015. Jeffrey accused the duo of keeping her as a sex slave in the early 2000s when she was underage. Jeffrey claimed in a May 2016 deposition to have been trafficked uh, to have sex with and provide erotic massages to powerful politicians, foreign leaders, well-heeled businessmen, in ordering the documents released, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit also warned that the allegations are not necessarily proven. Jeffrey alleged in her deposition that she was allegedly forced to have sex with Richardson, who was 71 years old, Britain's Prince Andrew, hedge fund manager Glenn Dubin, American scientist Marvin Minsky, another prince, which is not named, 
a large hotel chain owner, who is not named, uh, actually Stephen Kaufman, they did say, and model scout Jean-Luc Brunel. In another deposition, Jeffrey also revealed that she was trafficked to Mitchell, a former Senate Majority Leader who represented Maine from 1980 to 95 and was later named Special Envoy to the Middle East by President Obama. A sworn affidavit by former Epstein employee Juan Alessi also alleges Mitchell, who is now 85, of having associations with Epstein. Jeffrey also has long claimed that Epstein forced her to have sex with Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz and that the encounters were in Florida, on private planes, in New York, New Mexico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And of course, all of these claims are vehemently denied by the people that are named. The documents also reveal that Jeffrey allegedly had sexual relations with Prince Andrew in three separate locations, Maxwell's London apartment, New York, and Epstein's private island, Little St. James in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, included in the hundreds of pages of documents are pages of flight logs from Epstein's private jet. Prominent individuals who had traveled on the jet, according to those re uh, re records, include Bill Gates, your, your former friend, uh, who, uh, uh, Bill Clinton, uh, and A. Doug Band, uh, even President Trump is named, who flew once in 1997 from Palm Beach to New York, Colombian President Andres Pastrana, Dershowitz, Hyatt Hotel's Chairman Tom Pritzker, Brunel, and model and talent agent Naomi Campbell. That's a su surprise. Well, that's if some people say, you know, she's not really a female, she's a male. Well, we do. Everybody's a male. But that's right? what they say. Everybody's a man, there's no women. Right. How can they be children? Anyway, victims would be paid hundreds of dollars in cash by either Epstein or one of his associates or employees. Prosecutors also allege that Epstein worked and conspired with others, including employees and associates, who helped facilitate his conduct by contacting victims and scheduling their sexual encounters with Epstein at his mansion in New York City and in Palm Beach, Florida. Jeffrey has accused Maxwell as being Epstein's madam who allegedly approached her in 1999 when she was just 15 years old. Maxwell, who's now 57, is the daughter of Robert Maxwell, a disgraced publishing mogul who was accused of theft from his company's pension funds to prevent bankruptcy. Well, remember, last time I also reported on uh, her father's connections to the Mossad and all the books that were written about him. Yes, yes, I remember that, I remember that. So. My, my statement here is that when details of the unsealed documents are revealed, more indictments and arrests will be made. There should be a lot of very nervous elites out there. And stay tuned for similar events when Julian Assange and Edward Snowden are returned to the U.S. and also deposed. Yeah, now, I want to mention also it's very interesting that her last name is phonetically sounds like his first name. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Oh, uh -huh. Okay, that's the first thing. And the other thing I just want to mention is that Lynn Patton, who works at the Department of Housing and Urban Development, posted a screenshot of the news story this morning mm -hmm. and of his about his suicide. And in the caption, she wrote, Hillary. Well, I'm not, I would not be surprised that Hillary ordered because she has to block um, Bill. And it and suggests, friends. according to this little hashtag that she did, that Hillary Clinton obviously played a role in Epstein's death, and that's all over the internet that everybody is talking I about. I believe right that. Now. I believe that. And Patton also added the hashtag Vince Foster Part Two, mm -hmm. which of course refers to the long running, and they call it baseless conspiracy theory about the tragic suicide of a former lawyer in Bill Clinton's White House named Vince Foster. Yeah, but he was found in the woods with a gun. The barrel was too was. Too big for him to even hold it, arms length to shoot himself, and how did he do that? Right. And remember, and we posted several times about all of the deaths that have been linked to the Bill and Bill Clinton administration. Oh, there's, there's several dozen people that they were yeah. accused of and murder. Yeah, and all kinds of things mm -hmm. that happened similar to what happened to Vince Foster. So mm -hmm. it's interesting that an employee of the HUD posted this. So to me, it's some kind of a message out there by yes. somebody. Yes, and I'm sure that we will have more details uh, as the day goes on. Weeks go on. Yes, and I think it'll happening. go fast. I don't think they're going to hold up. Well, at this point, they can't wait 
too, too much right. longer so that, because, that's because the left side, fast. the Democrats are getting really Vile. Bad, bad, Vile. really bad. Yes, and Lynn Patton, just to note, is a black woman, and so of course we all know President Trump's been accused of being a racist. And obviously, He's not a racist. obviously she's supporting him. So you know, here we go. So okay. it'll be anyway. interesting to see what happens. Well, let's move to the Middle East because foxes have been spotted near the Western Wall in Jerusalem, causing a leading rabbi to claim that they're fulfilling a Jewish prophecy that predicts the building of a new temple. Rabbi Shmuel Rabinowitz, the rabbi of the Western Wall and the Holy Sites, shared photos of foxes near the historic site this week in the lead-up to the festival of Tisha B'Av on August 10th. Interesting that that's the day that Epstein died. Uh, the prophecy of the foxes will walk, says, the prophecy says, foxes will walk on it. And the rabbi was referring to a verse in the Book of Lamentations, chapter 5, uh, line 18, a religious text which recounts Jewish tragedies, including the destruction of the two temples that stood in Jerusalem, uh, the first by the Babylonians, second by the Romans. It refers to a prophecy made by Uriah that the Temple Mount would be destroyed and inhabited by foxes. If this prophecy was satisfied, according to, according to the Talmud, this would also fulfill it another by the prophet Zechariah about the temple being rebuilt, according to the Jerusalem Post. The relevant passage is the Tractate Makot 24b, which reads, Until the prophecy of Uriah with regard to destruction of the city was fulfilled, I was afraid that the prophecy of Zechariah would not be fulfilled, as the two prophecies are linked. Tisha B'Av 2019 was, begins the night of August 10th, uh, the main day of communal mourning for the Jewish calendar includes the reading of the Book of Lamentations in synagogues. Netanyahu said that the Third Temple will be re rebuilt during his term in office. And I will have more information on that in the September class with extreme details. Now, another strange story. Steel coffins carrying the remains of two teenage serial killers were loaded into police vehicles hours after the discovery of their bodies uh, after a 15-day manhunt. Uh, the bodies of the killers Briar Nagelski, who was 18, and Cam McLeod, who was 19, were found less than a mile from the Nelson River near Gillam, Manitoba, Canada, on uh, this past Wednesday morning. The killers ate their last meal of sardines, pork chops, and oranges. That's... You know, Very odd. Yeah, well, well for Canada, Canada is not known for its cuisine. But they said they didn't finish it. They left half yeah, of it. it was I'm happy. getting to that. It's weird. Um, and, before setting, and then they set their car on fire. That's a good way to escape, by setting your car on fire so you can't get, get anywhere. They drove across five Canadian provinces and covered more than 3,000 miles in just a couple of days. And nobody really. saw them. And nobody, well, they did have sightings. Well, you have to stop for fuel, right? You would think. 3,000 miles? Uh, their final hideout in a densely wooded area was found after a local tour guide named Clint Sawchuk spotted a blue sleeping bag tangled in some willows in the Nelson River uh, area. Um, and, the, and police also found a wrecked aluminum boat on the shore the next day. The boat, along with the sleeping bag, burned out car, scraps of pork and orange peels, formed a trail of evidence that led the police to the bodies. That's kind of like the 9-11 uh, hijackers leaving the, the manual in the, waiting, in, in the waiting area of how to hijack a plane that they found. And then their passport was just you know, laying on the ground. Sounds very suspicious. Local media speculated that the teens could have succumbed to the harsh terrain where threats include water contamination, anaphylactic shock, and dangerous predators ranging from blood-sucking flies to a variety of bears. Schmigelski and McLeod were the sole suspects in the murders of North Carolina backpacker China Deese, who was 24, and her Australian boyfriend Lucas Fowler, 23, as well as Vancouver botanist and father of two, Leonard Dyke. So, questions. What killed them? 
How did they get from central Ontario to northern Manitoba in less than a day? And nobody saw them. And nobody saw them. How could they eat food and die right away and leave a trail? Like, here, here's our bodies, they were just leaving a trail. And why would they leave a trail if they didn't want to be caught? So there's many, many unanswered questions. Which will never be answered. People just want them well, gone. Well, someday, and someday, gone. they'll be answered. Now, weather. I always talk about the weather. The founder of AccuWeather said there is no evidence to suggest heat waves have become more frequent due to climate change. Dr. Joel Myers, who's the CEO of the Weather Forecast website, uh, poured cold water on the commonly held belief that hot weather is becoming more extreme due to climate change, considering what's happened in recent years. In the article, he wrote, New York City has not had a daily high temperature above 100 degrees since 2012. And it's only had five such days since 2002. I remember when I was younger, that happened all the time. And now they're not happening. So it's getting colder. He claimed AccuWeather warns people all the time about the hazards of extreme heat. Um, and he said that the average temperatures have been higher uh, in, in recent years. Uh, although the average temperatures have been higher in recent years, there's no evidence so far that extreme heat waves are becoming more common because of climate change. Um, and he said many heat waves occurred historically. There were more in the history than now. He argued that over the last 30 years, for example, Kansas City averaged only 4.8 days a year at 100 degrees or higher, which is only one quarter of what uh, there was in the 1930s. In fact, he said, it's rarely mentioned that 26 out of 50 states had all-time highest temperatures in the 1930s that still hold, and they've not been changed in 75 years. He writes, given these numbers and the decreased frequency of days of 100 degrees or more, it cannot be said that the frequency or magnitude of heat waves is common. The paper pub uh, there was a, a paper published in the Environmental Research Communications that suggests by the end of the century, Parts of the Gulf Coast states could have 120 days per year, which feel as though they reach 100. Well, they always have had that for centuries because it's freaking hot down there. Well, a lot of humidity. The paper said cities throughout the country have experienced not only more frequent extreme heat over the last 60 years, but also more intense and long-lasting heat waves, which now we know is absolutely false. They have not. Uh, so, I thank you, Dr. Myers, for telling the truth. We here have had a relatively cool summer. Oh, we had some hot days. Yes, some hot days, but we mostly, hot mostly days. it's been cool. You've been going out in the morning because it's been so cool with the dogs. The heat wave in Europe was artificially created, and that's why it's not come back. And there has been summer snow in more places than ever before. Now, it is winter in Australia, but Australia is known for its heat. And even in the winter, it's not very cold. But residents of Australia's southeastern states are bracing for a weekend of cold fronts and strong, blustery winds. The Bureau of Meteorology said that a series of weather warnings for the weekend include bitterly cold temperatures, strong winds, and blizzard conditions for the southeastern states. At least 29 and a half inches or 75 centimeters of snow fell during one blizzard alone. And the temperatures on the highest peak reached a low of 19 Fahrenheit or minus 7 Celsius. And that's Australia. Mm -hmm. That's cold for there and a lot of snow. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we are expecting here a cold autumn and winter with early frost and heavy snow. El Nino is gone from the Pacific. And with increased volcanic activity and increased solar minimum, a lot of cold is being created on the Earth. Okay. All right, so I had mentioned one of my stories about uh, people calling Donald Trump racist, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now Donald Trump is calling Hollywood racist. They are. Because two of the biggest platforms right now is racism and gun control. What's going on over here in the U.S.? So Donald Trump called Hollywood racist, and he, for some reason, I don't know exactly why they're calling this movie racist, but that's how, how he, what he's built on. It's called The Hunt. 
Have you heard about that? I have, yes, I have seen Which that. actually shows liberal elites killing deplorables from red states for sport. That's that's racist. That's beyond racism. Well, it's, it's a terrible movie idea. They should never make such a film. No, it reminds me of The Hunger Games when that went on the books mm-hmm. and they were uh, promoting that for uh, middle well, schoolers. Why don't they make a movie called Jew Hunt? Yeah, well, it's called The, uh, the Hunger Games books I thought were terrible. But people thought it was a very big social statement. Well, now we have this movie that's kind of, in my opinion, following along this Hunger Games sign uh, line. And the movie is about liberals, liberal elites kidnapping and hunting MAGA MAGA types for sport. And the upcoming, they're calling it a political satire. But to me, I looked at the trailers and I don't think it's funny or a satire. Let me tell you something. The, the Democratic side, the left side, is more violent and vile than any other group in this country. Yeah, and so several studios right now are refusing to buy the film because of Good. its controversial plot. Good. However, the um, studio itself is saying there are no plans to not release the movie. And no plans to not move forward with the movie. Well, they have to say that because they made, put a lot of money in it. They said, well, they shouldn't have made it this movie to start well, I with. I agree. And because they thought the Democrats would be way ahead, that's maybe why. Maybe that's why. But if they're calling it a satirical <clears throat> take on wealthy thrill seekers who take a private jet to a five-star resort where they embark on a deeply rewarding expedition that involves mm-hmm. hunting down and killing designated uh, hmm. humans. Sounds like uh, Epstein Island. The violent gun-toting film revolves around a group of people from a do- predominantly Republican states being kidnapped and hunted for sport. That should be illegal to make such it's a It's a terrible thing. What's interesting, again, is apparently, which I didn't know, maybe you knew this, that characters in the film refer to the victims as deplorables. Mm-hmm. Apparently that's a term that Hillary Hel- Clinton yeah, Hillary, used. Who actually is the most deplorable person During the earth. 2016 to call Trump supporters deplorable, mm-hmm. which is really a terrible thing because we're supposed to be able to have our own opinion. Right. Oh, no, the, not anymore. And not be called deplorable you know, if you don't support think. this person or that person. You're not allowed to have your own think. Now, this was also interesting because this movie was originally called The Red State versus Blue State, and they changed it to The Hunt. Okay, so the movie has caused outrage with the conservatives calling it everything from political violence to sick murder fantasies about right-wingers. And we know what's going on in the world, so it's a terrible thing, in my opinion. Now, on the heels of that, what's interesting to me is that this, is a, this next story is a bizarre story which is getting a lot of press. It's about tech tycoon John McAfee. McAfee? McAfee who is talking about the red and blue states. Remember, this movie used to be called Red, started out Red State versus Blue State, and they still kept the term Red State as far as the, um, the plot. So he's calling this Red and Blue States should divide up and prepare for a civil war as the gun control fight heats up. Well, there is already a civil war. He said that the West Coast liberals should arm themselves to the teeth Red staters should sell liberals their BB guns and say their AR-15s. Colorado, New Mexico should be annexed to Mexico. (laughs) The Central North was deemed too damn cold and the Northeast should be ignored. Florida should be uh, sold to Cuba or change its state language to Spanish. That already is. (laughs) And then he said, um, hateful words on both sides of the gun issue. Is civil war coming? If so, here's my advice. And it said he uh, looks like he's speaking from what appears to be a tinfoil covered room. He's 73 years old. Mm -hmm. He claims to be wanted by the U.S. government. Uh And he starts the video, of course, by telling people, if you're anticipating civil war, I think I can help you. Then he holds up this map with these red and blue states. I saw that, which is not even an accurate map. But he doesn't say how he even decided what was red and blue. He just was coloring. Now, when a Twitter user asked if his advice was a joke, he said, no, I was deadly serious throughout. And apparently in late July... McAfee was hiding out in an ultra-secure facility, which was also pictured with tinfoil covered walls, in Lithuania, because he fled the Dominican Republic, where authorities arrested him and his wife for sailing into the island with a boatload of firearms. It was a Dominican I Republic. I saw the picture of it. Yep, and then, apparently, he was not detained by the U.S. government, and Dominican authorities allowed him to choose where he would be sent after they were ensured that the U.S. had no legal cases or extradition requests for him. And, and they chose Lithuania? Uh, well, we don't exactly know. They're just alluding to a lot of things and they're putting it out there. And that's what they do. They put things out there and then people do what they see, which is unfortunate. 
Apparently he was born at a U.S. military base on British territory. So he's both a U.S. citizen and a British citizen. Oh, lucky. And he was asking his Twitter followers whether he should campaign to be British Prime Minister. Oh, yeah, he would be. And he's also seeking the Libertarian Party's nomination for U.S. President in 2020. He could be emperor of both places. So according to this article, he, was, he apparently developed early internet security software and has been sought by authorities in the U.S. and Belize. I think he also developed early dementia. So a lot of weird things, but the fact that this is being promoted, again, this is, I'm telling you people, don't do what is being shown to you. Don't listen to the news, period. What's going on out there is really terrible. And then Marianne Williamson, who I reported on, who's seeking out, um, she wants to be a Democratic nomination for president. Yeah, good luck with that one, Marianne. Well, she's claiming her rivals, her Democratic rivals, are smearing her as crazy and dangerous. You think? To, in order to keep her out of the third presidential Duh. debate. Because yeah, actually, as, as loony as she is, she makes more sense than they do. Well, at least she's not promoting violence. <laughs> so she's saying there's some very powerful forces that want to make sure I'm not in that third debate. I bet. So I must be doing something right. Well, that's true. She said, it's frustrating because I like to think on the left, we don't do things like that. Now listen to this. She admitted being on the left. Yes. And what did she think the left does? That's why they're the left. Well, she said it's a bit of a wake-up call. Yeah, hello. And she said that she's blaming her peers for spreading stories that she's anti-vaccine and advised patients not to take their medicine. That's called politics. But not among your peers. You're supposed to support each other. Like you're trying to get to the top and there's only you and the other person. Yeah. I'm just telling you, it doesn't look very good for the Democrats. It doesn't look good for any of those people. No. The talking points are obvious. She said the words are anti-science and anti-medicine. Now, it's interesting. I didn't know she... Did you know she's Jewish? She said she's... I'm a Jew. I go to the doctor. The idea of me not being for medicine is preposterous. So watch your eye on Marianne Williamson to see what happens with her because they're making fun of her a lot and they're doing a lot of things. <laughs> but as I said, at least she's not violent. She's not promoting violence that we know. No, but she's on the wrong side. Well, so maybe she'll figure that out or maybe she'll give the Democrats something positive to look at instead of the oh, rest. Right. And they'll listen to that. I don't know. But here, um, close to home, South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Uh, Is that how you say his name? Yeah, who cares? We don't really care. But anyway, he says that America is under attack from homegrown white nationalists who are carrying out the mass shootings. Why don't he just read the script from CNN? He says America is under attack from homegrown white nationalist terrorism. White nationalism is evil. And it is inspiring people to commit murder. It's being condoned at the highest level of the American government. That has to end. Oh, that's ridiculous. He is a moron. But my point is, is that this... He can't even handle South Bend that has a high murder rate and bad reputation. And he wants to be president so he could do that to the whole country. But my point is, is they've continued to play this race card and the gun control. That's all over the news. That's all we're hearing because right Because that's now. all they have. They just have to make up stories. Racist, gun control, murder, blah, blah, blah. They're over and over and over. Yes. They say, how about, how about a suggestion to fix something? Well, they're, they're trying to stir people up. And unfortunately, that they're, what they're doing is they're activating a lot of these mind-controlled uh, yeah. slaves out there. Mm-hmm. So that's what's happening. So remember in our books, uh, Healing Archetypes and Symbols, okay? Which I'll be doing a webinar on that in Quito at the end of this month. Yeah, and the other one I want to show you, oh, uh, 13 Cubed, okay? This one is also mind, about case studies of mind control and programming. So these are the types of books you want to be reading so you can control your own mind before somebody controls it for you. And I will also show you always the true reality of sexuality. So a lot of things going on out there. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. But this other thing, I wanted to bring it up. This is kind of a strange story. But the reason I wanted to bring it up is because, again, like I told you, it's this race card thing. I'm sure you saw it. The Texas Police Department had two white officers on horses leading a black man yes. in handcuffs by right. a rope. Was that on South Padre Island or something like um, that? I, Galveston, wherever that is. Mm-hmm. This was the Galveston Police Department. It's near Houston. Okay, well anyway, so of course Adrian Bell, a Democrat, said that this is a terrible thing you know, because they're leading this white man or leading mm-hmm. this black man mm-hmm. on a horse. Right. My opinion is, anybody who cr- who commits a crime... Well, Right. It's going to be subject to arrest. Right. They don't think, what did that person do to deserve that treatment? And they're not going they to don't look, ask that question. And they're not going to look at your skin. They're going to look at your crime, and that's what's going to happen. So 
Anyway, of course, the police department wound up apologizing for the incident, which I think is wrong. The criminal ought to apologize to the people right. for committing a crime right. to start with. Exactly. Now, this was, I don't know what the man did, but they called it criminal trespass. And they said that this man was not unknown to the police and he had been warned before. Right. So they had to get his, you know, him from one place to another because they're busy people. So I'm just telling you that this is the race card, and ignore this and kind fact, of propaganda. I don't know if you saw, there was a video of, the, of a black police officer on that island saying that there was nothing wrong with what the white people did. Right, because it's not a race thing. It's mm -hmm. a criminal thing. Right. If you're a criminal and you do something wrong... I don't care what color you are. And, you know, you just, they said something about he was embarrassed. You know, he deserves to be embarrassed. He yeah, was he a was, criminal. He's a criminal. He did and illegal things. If he's pink, it doesn't matter. He just deserves to be... Just like the immigrants who try to illegally come to the U.S. are committing a crime. Right. So the police have nothing to be embarrassed about. They're doing their I job. I wouldn't cross over the border into China and expect them to give me flowers. They obviously didn't use excessive force. You know, they did. They were taking their prisoner, whatever they want to call him, but he was obviously a criminal. So he's the one that needs to apologize, mm -hmm. not the police department. And speaking of, of that, yes. it really has been disturbing to see these white actresses and actors on the on the on the internet apologizing for being born white. Yes. Really? No. Seriously? You're apologizing for being white? You're a moron. Yeah, because what we're telling you is they're trying to divide and conquer, and unfortunately, right. this it's is how they're it's going to be up. illegal to be white. Well, yes, that's what they're trying you to do. You can't be white, you can't be straight, and you can't have a, a child that's not the transgender. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Pay attention to all these things. If you haven't read my article, it's free. It's called What is the Astral? That's what they're trying to put in people. Seriously, people. And this is what's happening. These people who are doing these horrendous these things. These are demonic entities. Yes, and we're going to talk about this. And they this should be killed. In our upcoming books, we're talking about it in our... These are uh, demons. In demons. our September classes. And like I said, read our books and join our discussions on our website, expansions.com. Less than a dollar a day. And you will see what we have to say and things that you can do to protect yourself so that you are not the victim of these things. Anyway, the other thing, now this, I, I didn't even know was still legal, but apparently conversion therapy, which is when they're trying to tell you, you know, you're mm -hmm. not, you know, you're supposed to be straight, you can't be anything else, that's still legal in 32 states. I thought I that was that. federally outlawed. I thought, it, I didn't know they did such things. They said that it's, um, it's legal to subject children under 18 to conversion therapy in 32 states. The, wait, wait. They'll probably then have conversion therapy for white people so they could become black. Or straight people to become yeah. the other thing. Mm -hmm. Now that will be considered yeah. abnormal. But my point is, and I've talked to you about this before, be who you are and don't be part of an agenda. That's the issue. You know, we talk about yeah. it in here. In fact, on the in the back, um, I was meant to find this chart before we started, but in the back I have a chart and it talks or shows about the um here we go. It shows in here, we wrote this back in 2002, mm. that basically sexuality is a spectrum. So it's not something that, you know, we shouldn't be voting on people based on their sexual preferences. No, it's like, you know, it's, that's personal and private. Should I have a special bathroom because I like vanilla? Maybe. Or should I have a special, you know, opportunity because I like pizza? I mean, seriously. Yeah, this is crazy. You know, don't vote for people because of their sexuality. You know, let everybody be who they are as long as they don't hurt each other. Who cares? That's my feeling. Anyway, but this, this I didn't know that they had, and they're calling it tortuous conversion therapy. Oh, that's wrong. U.S. doctors want that ban, which, of course, I obviously agree with that. But anyway, it's just amazing to me it still exists, and they wrote about it in the New England Journal of Medicine. Oh, that's a really brainiac area. But, but the point is, is the doctors are saying, let's get rid of it, and yes, obviously, we don't want such things going on, and I didn't even know it still was going on. So. I really didn't either. I thought that was a... I thought it was history. Uh, me too, but they, this particular article has stories of people who have gone through it, but it involves, as you probably already know, shock therapy, hypnotizing, even castrating patients. First of all, is it, it's voluntary, isn't it? I mean, they don't no. force people to do it. I don't know. I don't think they Because they can them. do minors. So if they can do minors, they could be forced. I just think it's terrible. It's just, I'm not even going to tell you the details, but it's terrible. Anyway, something a little bit more, not as horrible, but still interesting to me. Uh, Italy, Venice. We all remember the um, the boat that ran into uh, back in There's June. There's always boats running into something in Italy. All right. Well, because of that, they want to um, call uh, Venice 
a World Heritage Site. <laughs> so really, that starts with it. So and after that's that, the end of Venice. but beginning in May, apparently they have a campaign out called Enjoy Respect Venezia. And the, they have set up new tourist rules, and this is known as DASPOS. I don't know what that means, DASPOS. So this new set of rules states that visitors will be penalized if they sit or lie down in front of shops, historic monuments and bridges, wander around shirtless or in swimming costumes, and bathe or swim in the historic canals. Mm -hmm. Now apparently um, it also bans visitors from littering. Oh, that's a good one. Setting up picnics in public spaces, pausing too long on bridges, and riding bikes through the city. So apparently two backpackers from Germany sat on the steps of the famous Rialto Bridge, took out their portable stove to make themselves a hot beverage. Well, that was stupid. And it got them into trouble. Well, it should have been. They should not they be doing that. They were reported, that. they were arrested, and they were fined around a thousand U.S. dollars. I to cook on the bridge. I'm just telling you. I, I agree with that. They, they were stupid. But and they said that it's the 40th time since May that visitors have been ordered to leave the town for breaching the rules. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that. And they said, I didn't say if it was wrong or not wrong. I'm telling you that this is what at least somebody is enforcing behavior. Right. Because people don't understand about behavior. And it says not only that, but the identities of those subject to a removal order that are now being reported to their embassies and their consulates. So I thought that was well, you know, just like the Chinese tourists that you know spray painted the Egyptian hieroglyphics yeah. and chopped off the nose of a statue. I mean, they should be reported and and their passports revoked, so they can't go and do things yeah. like that. Well, you know, these this is bad manners. So I don't know how extreme they should be, but I still feel you know it's very interesting that now we have a, an entire town that is enforcing good manners. Well, I I think that's great. Even here in St. Joseph, there are signs that talk about if your stereos are too loud in your cars, you could be subject Good. to the fine. So Good. that's respecting the other people's space, in my opinion. Well, here in St. Joseph, also, if you don't mow your lawn or paint your house, they will yeah, take of, care of that for you. A lot of communities are, mm -hmm. are like that, which, you know, it does help to a degree. But, again, it should be from internal mm -hmm. that we do these things and not because we're forced. Right. Now, this other article you should like because, to me, it might indicate volcanic activity within Mount... Rainier, mm. because there was a debris flow. Now, it was interesting, when this article first came out, they called it a uh, something besides a debris flow. Let's see if I have it. I know I have it. I just don't know if I circled it so I can find it. But anyway, um, outburst flood. They call it a rare outburst flood, and then they changed it to a debris flow. Mm -hmm. But apparently this last week on the southwest side of the park, um, the geologists are saying it's, of course, attributing to warm weather, but we saw the film and it looked like there was actually steam coming up mm -hmm. around it. So a lot of well, water... Did that ever happen when you were... They said they recorded 32 outburst floods and debris flow since 1967, so obviously... Oh, so that's common then. Well, they're calling it rare. And they said that um, if it happens, the water moves so fast, you know, not to try to outrun it, but to go up above it. So you stay safe, but my point is... Yeah, then you can't come down. <laughs> well, at least some, maybe somebody will find you and you won't be... Uh, yeah, you know, Bigfoot will find you won't up there. go away. But to me, because I saw the steam, it made me wonder, well, is there volcanic mm -hmm. activity? Well, there is. And there are way, these are ways of telling you about that. So well, that was an interesting article. And my last one has to do about aliens, one of everybody's favorites. So mm -hmm. I want to remind you, galactic history with pictures even in here of aliens, Blue Blood, one of our most popular books. Be sure you read this one. Anyway, amateur, an amateur astro astronomer. Now, I don't necessarily believe this, but I'm going to report it because this is what it said, and I did see the film. I don't know if you saw that. But an amateur astronomer, Texas photographer Ethan Chappelle, captured an apparent meteor explosion while imaging Jupiter on August 7th. Mm -hmm. The impact appears as a fleeting white spot just below the planet's equator and lasting only for an instant. So how can an amateur astronomer catch this? Well, at the same time, it says NASA released a new image that shows the giant planet's trademark great spot and an intense color palette. So that's all NASA shows you, but this amateur astronomer showed this thing. To me, it looks like some kind of a vehicle ship. Oh, I saw it, uh -huh. yeah. It says it's a fleeting white spot, but anyway, so I, I think... I get fleeting white spots all the time. Yeah, I know. 
But I just thought that it was very interesting that they put that out there as an amateur astronomer because I can't tell you NASA got it because NASA's got to explain it. Sometimes I also get a debris flow. Yeah, well, I, I am witness to all of that, and I know. Mm. So be sure, people, you want to read 1,099 Affirmations for Self-Change. This was the basis of my last set of webinars last year. We will continue um, with this right. uh -huh. after our September class. So, But we do have some of these free to those of you who are on our member side. Mm. And this one, Decoding Your Life, this is on Universal Law. This is a three-year course that we did. And people who went through the course got a lot out of it. And these webinars are also free with your membership. If you don't have a membership on www.expansions.com, you need to get one right away because there's so much material in there that will help you traverse these crazy times, right? So, www.expansions.com, get your membership today. Like, comment, subscribe, and share because I tell you that YouTube is doing weird things with our videos and our comments. So we're depending on you to get the word out about hyperspace oversold work. Mm -hmm. New books are coming out. We just completed the, you're on the third one. We're almost done with the third one, so, but everything is in the the first two are the, mm -hmm. with the layout people. You just so. have to wait for the printer to get you know all that stuff. Well, the layout is, person has yeah. it. Right September now. class uh, is going to be a, a. We're down to three. Oh really? We still so have, awesome. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's only three spots left. Yeah. The webinars you spoke about, um, and then maybe in another week or so, I'll have information on an event in Puerto Rico at the end of September, after the September class. Yeah, so we always have lots of stuff going on, as you know. As I said, we depend on you at this point because... Uh, Why should we depend on them? Well, like, they're not reliable. Well, get reliable. So, www.expansions.com, get your membership, get your books, find out more about what we've been talking about for a lot of years. So, we got a lot of information to share, and you don't want to fall into all these falsehoods right now. In fact, even on my current study blog, we have a very good discussion going on on gun control and self-empowerment and the outer displays versus what's going on in the inner worlds. Lots of very interesting things going yes. on on our website mm -hmm. all and, the time. Yes, and, and keep your eyes and ears open for the rest of this month of August and even into September, there's going to be some very shocking news coming It's out. already shocking and it's going to yes, keep getting more it's, shocking. It's going to be even more so. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. you guys, you take care of yourselves out there. Safe mind patterns, remember. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye for now.